everyone, my name is Montier Strader. I am a graduate from Hampton University's School of Business and I am 23 and graduated. Growing up was pretty interesting for me. Um, so my mom had me at 18 years old, her freshman year of college actually. I kind of stayed with my grandmothers until I was about two or three. I was still her child, but they kind of looked after me so that she could finish college. I grew up in a two-parent home for the most part. They got divorced when I was in the fourth grade, which was really like devastating. But my father is pretty much in my life for the most part. So once the divorce hit, we moved over here on Prairie. And it wasn't too far from Gardena, but it was just kind of like adjusting to not being in the same house with both parents, getting used to a step parent, and I just felt like things happened so fast. Moving forward, elementary and middle school was pretty much smooth sail. It was time for me to go to high school. My mom demanded that I went to King Drew, which was she was the dean at, and I was like, I really don't want to go there. For the most part, my mom always made decisions for me. I felt like I lived in her shadow, and I just kind of wanted to be my own person. I've always been, you know, very outgoing and my own person, but in some sense, I always wanted to please my mom, just make sure she's pleased, but it seemed like I could never please her. So when I applied to Hampton, I really wanted to go to Howard because she wanted me to go to Howard. I didn't even get into Howard. Out of all 13 schools, Spelman, Clark, Atlanta, UC Riverside, I got into every school but Howard. And to me, it was kind of devastating. Like, I didn't do well with rejection. But it was like, maybe you need to go to Hampton. When you went to visit Howard, Howard wasn't even open because a student had been kidnapped. So when you went to Hampton, they showed you a good time. You felt a warm welcome. Maybe that's where you should go. And she was saying, I don't have the money. I don't really want to spend the money on Hampton. You're going to go to UC Riverside. I cried. I was like, I want to go to an HBCU. I saw Drumline. I saw Stump the Yard. I want to go to an HBCU. Went to Hampton with a, with a bandana on my eyes, literally. Like, I did not know what I was getting myself into. I had no expectations for college. I had no expectation for this prestige college that I was about to attend. Hampton literally changed my life. Moving into the dorms, I got to kind of know myself a little more. I met girls from Chicago, Texas, DC, Maryland, Virginia, and just getting a different taste of where everyone is from. And some people think like going to an HBCU is living in a black world and America or the world is not black, but it may not be diverse in ethnicity, but it's so diverse in culture because girls from California are not like girls from Charlotte, North Carolina, or they're not girls from DC. So where we're from LA and your weaves and your nails and your designer bag means everything. These girls listen to go-go music, eat fried chicken with mambo sauce. Like the culture is totally different. So it was so refreshing to get to know black girls that were from different places. Like everybody kind of rubbed on everybody. As a business major, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Hampton is known for their prestigious five-year MBA program, which I was actually thrown into. My mom said, what do you want to major in? I said, business. I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. I braided hair when I was in the fourth grade, so candy. You know, I just always had a hustle. I like to provide for myself. So going in as a five-year MBA major, I didn't know how strenuous the program really was. It really took so much focus because a lot of students take 12 to 15 units per semester, whereas for me, I'm required to take 18 units per semester. I'm already a social butterfly. I didn't know how time management was really gonna fit in that. My sophomore year is when everything changed. I been having this idea for a long time. In my accounting class, I would just doodle Hampton girls, hashtag Hampton girls, hashtag Hampton girls. Oh, this will look good on a sweatshirt. Yeah, their stuff in the bookstore wasn't that cute. It wasn't my style. So I said, I'm gonna put this on a sweatshirt and I'm gonna wear it. And then I changed it. I said, what about college girls? If I do college girls, I can sell them. And if I sell them, there's no limit to who I can sell it to. Hampton girls can buy it, USC girls can buy it, LMU girls can buy it. So it was started off as a really, really small idea and it just literally grew into a large epidemic. So I called home, I ordered 24 sweatshirts, 24 t-shirts. I entered to have a table into the Black Entrepreneur Expo in um, Black History Month of February 2012. February 6th, I set up the table. Literally, when I say I put this stuff on the table and it sold out in one hour, I said, oh, this is it. You know, selling sweatshirts to $20 made me feel rich. But it was like, you really have something here. So I just 
continue to design. Designing is my passion. I've always been really artistic and really business like minded. So I'm like, okay, where fashion meets business, college girls brand. Like, let's do it. I really wasn't giving anybody the attention that they asked for. I was dating this guy, Nico, and I fell in love with him. He was just the sweetest person. And I went off to college. I came home for the summer, focused on my brand. Didn't even realize that I didn't give him the attention that a girlfriend should. I went to spend the last week with him, the first week of August, before I went back to school. And we did everything. And I went to get my hair done. He wanted to see me that day. I told him I had to get my hair done. He popped up on me. I was so very happy. He left around 7.15. I went to go get on my flight. I waited on him to call, but he never called to tell me that he made it or anything like that. I get to my layover in Dallas, Texas, 26 mixed calls from his family, and so I gave them a call back, and they told me that he had been hit by a truck and that he was on life support. Those words changed my life forever. I was devastated, I cried, I was in the deepest depression I could ever imagine anyone to be in, from being the happiest girl on earth to being the saddest girl on earth, being in college, rushing home to cry, locking myself in my room, being just down and low. So I prayed and I prayed and it brought me closer to God in ways that I could never even imagine. And I was able to finish on time. I finished my four year degree in four years. I could have crit walked across that stage. I was so happy. Walking across that stage felt amazing. And I just want to let you know, you can do it. No matter what you go through, keep God first. Keep your faith within yourself and you can make it happen.